Prophecy is a ringing issue in this age and it's very important to know why prophecy is this relevant in the body of Christ at the time. Well, a big revival is looming in the air. started already, but we're approaching its crooks before the return of the Lord. Prophets are to play a major role in this revival that we're talking about. And that being the case, prophetic accuracy is the kernel of the matter. Very importantly, knowing what it takes to have prophetic accuracy running in your ministry or in your life as a prophet or one who prophesies regularly is very very crucial amongst the many things that one is supposed to know or be furnished with in order to excel prophetically in terms of going into doing prophecy with 100 percent accuracy or what is generally termed as forensic prophecy is the issue of mood swings or emotions in this piece i'm not talking about particularly the emotion of the people to be prophesied to but the emotion of the prophet prophets prophesy at their best under three emotional conditions as scripturally found or discovered some of these emotional states are not known to teaming prophets so leveraging on these emotional states or moods in order to gain prophetic accuracy isn't clearly obtainable this is the issue i want to do a kind of justice to in this material the emotional conditions or mood state that allows for prophetic accuracy as with individual prophets whether kingly or priestly prophets choosing or called prophet has got a lot to do with the perception of the prophet in quote or the one who prophesies in question with types of prophetic message and these i'll just outline here the first prophetic message we have a warning message a huge percentage of the prophetic messages or work in scripture fall under this category where god sends a prophet or appoints a prophet or intermittently uses a particular prophet to warn the people concerning particular wrong they're doing this doesn't mean that the prophet necessarily handles only warning messages but that it is a kind of prophetic message or a type of prophetic message that a prophet is likely to be assigned with to undertake often more than not prophets given this responsibility are the reluctant prophets because they are not willing to go out to pass this kind of message how be it because of their call it necessitates them to go out and give this kind of message warning message comes with a pledge of consequence from god if the people receiving the message doesn't retract or refrain or withdraw or are not restrained from the wrong they are doing at the time prophets that fall under this category would be the prophet jeremiah the prophet jonah and if you called gideon a prophet he was one of them they were reluctant when god asked them to step up and speak. Elijah was one with this kind of message. When you look at where he ran away from Jezebel to hide, you discover that reluctancy thing in him. The next kind of prophetic message is that of direction. Like Moses the prophet told the people of Israel, you have long tarried here. So break comes from here and proceed. When it comes to the type of the prophetic message that is called the message of direction, it's a message that comes in when people are halt between two opinions or they are confused and require that direction be given so they can make progress either as a collective entity or as individuals. This is when this kind of message is given to a prophet to bring their way. An example of this kind of message will be that that Elijah brought to the people of Israel on Mount Carmel during the contest because unlike Ahab and Jezebel, they were different people. The people of Israel as a whole were people halting between two opinions, knowing not which way to go. Do we go to Baal or do we go to the living God? That was the issue. And Elijah showed up and asked them, how long will you hold between two opinions? If God is God, let him be worshipped. And if Baal be God, let him be worshipped. So in scripture, you see occasions where people have need of direction and God will send a prophet usually to come to give them direction. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15 from verse 1, when the people of Israel had erred and God abandoned them and the people were suffering, the prophet appeared by the name Oded and he prophesied to them and gave them direction. That day, they decided to go with the living God and God, God was entreated of them. God gave attention to their supplications and reconciled with them so that Israel had a new beginning. That message was a message of direction. The third kind of prophetic message is that of solution. There is a prophetic message that is 
headed directly at bringing a solution. Somebody is sick, somebody is dead, somebody is about to die, somebody is about to lose a business, or demonically possessed and a prophet comes after diagnosing and uh, expelling the demon, solution comes. Some prophetic message take two or the three of them. Like when Elisha said to Naaman to go to the river of Jordan to wash himself seven times and to be healed of leprosy, it was both direction and solution. Yes, direction, go and wash. That's the only river you must go and wash. The prophet was the one who knew which river Naaman must wash himself for his leprosy to be healed. Two, when he arrived that river, washed himself seven times and got healed, this was the issue of solution. The solution here was empowered by the word from the mouth of the prophet, which was intended the word from the mouth of God. You intend to be prophetically accurate. When you do, you must be versatile with the types of prophetic message that are obtainable and which among these prophetic messages God gives to you or which set of combination he gives to you regularly or which one is giving you at the material time so you know how to go because it takes different emotional state to serve the prophet or one who prophesies to be accurate with his prophecy part-time so let's move to the emotional states or mood that prophets leverage on to release accurate prophecy the first one is anger when a prophet is angry contrary to what is popularly true because it is true that when a prophet is angry there is that chance that he is not able to pass see clearly, see clearly, or hear clearly, and so could, in the attempt to prophesy, catch up with flaws prophetically, and hence be termed an inaccurate prophet. So he goes out of stock as a result. But then, the same mood of anger or emotional state of anger, if a prophet has got mastery with managing this emotional state, he is able to dispatch clear as crystal prophecies with 100% accuracy. A huge percentage of the prophets in scripture fall under the category of the angry prophets. Most of the message that the prophets in scripture gave out were a warning message. In most cases, the messages that came as a warning came from a prophet who was angry at the time. Either he was angry at what he was seeing taking place in his neighborhood, like Habakkuk and Obadiah, or he was angry because of the message that he was receiving, like Jonah, or he was angry because of the attitude of the people that he is sent to when it comes to receiving his message, like was the case with Jeremiah, or he was angry with the way the people treated God, like was the case with the prophet Elijah, or he was angry with the way the people treated the things of God and hence his temple, like was the case with Jesus Christ. So anger is a mood that prophets must, must learn how to manage. Irrespective of what triggered the anger, you must learn how to balance prophetically when you have come to the state of annoyance because that is the time that your nerve connections are very sensitive, physically speaking, to pick any kind of impulse. It corresponds as well with the moment that your spiritual senses are ready to pick signals observable in the realm of the spirit. You can pick it and interpret them for prophecy. One thing with prophet in the mood state of anger is that this kind of prophet can prophesy with particular limitation to the issue within the prophetic scope at that time only. This is what I mean. Because of Ahab's and Elijah's contacts or challenge or combat and coming to the Mount of Camel with the prophets of Baal and to contend about who the true God is and to lead the people of Israel back to God. There's something I want you to pick from there. The prophet's prophecy would be limited at that time to issues surrounding Israel's relationship with God, the prophets of Baal dealing with the people of Israel and God, the king and the queen of Israel dealing with God, the people, Baal and him as a prophet. That's where his prophetic antenna or receptor plates can pick prophecies from. So if it attempts to prophesy to someone else about something else or look into Assyria to prophesy a different thing, he may flaw there. But the impulse stimulated in the realm of the spirit that can cough back from his subconscious memory as well as he is able to tap into the spirit realm and bring at that time will be related to the issue surrounding his annoyance as a prophet. If he wants to switch from that issue in question to another one, he has to tone his anger in a different direction. So the prophet that is angry is limited in prophecy to the issue in question. 
Christian. That's the particular issue concerning which he can prophesy. And that hinders him as well from tapping into other mood at that time that can also guarantee prophetic accuracy. So the moment he's angry, it means he has switched off the other two mood that can enable him to prophesy accurately. So when you are angry as one who prophesies or as a prophet, take note of this fact that your prophecy is going to be limited around the issue or issues in question that are connected or spurred your anger at the material time so that if you concentrate on these issues you are going to get information that are relevant and make sure in the course of your anger you are not prompted to sin and you don't lose your manners you don't lose your personality in the process be the man who is able to manage yourself in spite of your anger or level of anger never lose your word if you are those you will be able to prophesy with 100 percent accuracy when apostle paul prophesied in acts of the apostle as he was before the king preaching and somebody came to interfere with the message he prophesied this man was going to be blind for a season the man got blind for a season indeed like two weeks according to the word from the mouth of apostle paul the second mood swing that prophets leverage on to do forensic prophecy or gate prophetic accuracy is referred to as ecstasy. Ecstatic state of mind can blur a prophet's vision and at the same time can unlock a prophet's vision depending on the prophet's ability to manage ecstasy. Scripturally speaking, there were occasions in which ecstasy aided prophecy. If a prophet is ecstatic, he is far from rational thinking and logical reasoning. From that point, he is doused or toasts into the spirit realm. And from that realm, he's able to pick issues that are not born from rational or logical reasoning. And he just declared them as a result of his ecstatic state that had dislodged his engagement with the physical realm. So he's tilted into the realm I called the forensic prophecy community sub -reign. There, in ecstasy, he can be laughing so wide and given prophecies that are hundred percent accurate you can be laughing you can be joking with them you can be doing all that but in the true sense you've been just told into the other realm and right there everything becomes so clear to you and you begin to prophesy so your ecstasy it's not a state of delusion as is often the case with most people this state enables a prophet to do a lot of things with a lot of ease there were prophecies that were given under this condition in scripture one when the angel spoke to Abraham about the baby Isaac to be born. They were ecstatic. Two, when Elisha spoke to the Shunammite woman about the termination of her barrenness, he was ecstatic. When Jesus prophesied to the disciples about their position or placement in the kingdom so that Jesus exposed to them how that many had sought this opportunity to see these things that the apostles were seeing and had no privilege to see. Jesus was ecstatic when he caught that rain and saw the place where the apostles were placed and then furnished with access to the kind of revelation or kingdom reality or secrets or details that has been made accessible to them by virtue of their companionship with Jesus Christ. These were all prophecies that came up as a result of ecstasy. During the Lord's Supper, Jesus prophesied about Judah betraying him. This prophecy was born from anger. The last mood state that a prophet leverages on to give forensic prophecy is called joy. I don't mean happiness. I don't mean ecstasy. I mean calmness. I mean undisturbed state. A child of God is in a joy-filled state when he's undisturbed, when he's balanced emotionally. He's not angry, he's not ecstatic. He is just somewhere in the middle there. Vast of the prophecies happen at this realm. Some persons are not able to leverage on this. When we play a lot of music in church, worship and play great music with great melody and people dance and the prophet dance and you enjoy the music before the prophetic realm is unlocked and you begin to prophesy, you're prophesying as a result of an ecstatic state. And you know, music is a prophetic code in itself that enhances forensic prophecy. Talking about this mode that I refer to as the flat mode, it's also the flat mode. You are not ecstatic, you are not angry, you are just somewhere 
in the middle and you fast, you prayed, you are stable. It's a very good state. Of course, all kinds of prophecy, including warning and uh, solution can come here. But in most cases, prophecies that come under this condition comes in form of direction. And this state works so much with prophetic code number 16. That is called the code of shadow. You are in a flat state. I call joy. And under this condition, things flow smoothly, like divine direction, like relevant information, you know, very vital, crystal clear prophecy. You release them and they are just as exact. Nobody is able to dispute because they are coming from a place that is like a plane with God. You are standing with God. He's giving you all of the details and you are just pouring out everything you are hearing. No noise is disrupting you because you are not emotionally unstable. You get me? As a result of this, you do a lot of things prophetically. So these are about the three mood state that guarantee forensic prophecy or prophetic accuracy. So if you've been able to do your mathematics with my other videos on how the forensic prophecy realm is being activated and you merge it up with this, I think you're good to go. I release upon you the grace to prophesy at a forensic level. We are building a prophetic generation and I trust to be a tool used by God to usher you in there in Jesus' mighty name.